being critical is a way to, that you can improve on things. So I think that that's part of the process. Business of Architecture, episode 278. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I am Enoch Sears and I am your host on the journey to discover the tips, strategies, and secrets to running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's interview is a behind the scenes conversation with the firm owner graduate of the architecture firm Freedom Formula Program I run with Scott Beebe. Scott and I started the Freedom Formula Program several years ago because I heard from so many firm owners that they were overwhelmed with the day-to-day -day running of the practice, putting out fires, constant interruptions, and they longed to get freedom back into their life again. So in the program, Scott and I work with firm owners to implement systems and frameworks so they can free up their time and lay the foundation for an impactful and profitable practice. In this candid conversation, I speak with Jefferson Sheerbeek, an architect who's run a successful practice in Southern California with his partner, Susan Addison, for over 25 years. He's no newcomer to business either. In the past, he founded and ran a successful CAD outsourcing service with a partner, a business which still exists to this day. In this episode, we have a conversation about why Jefferson joined the program and what he wanted to get out of it. We talk about the steps he is taking to get his firm to the next level. I think you'll find my conversation here with Jefferson extremely valuable as you work to build your ideal practice. In today's episode, you'll discover how to set a vision that inspires you to set and actually meet your goals. How Jefferson took his business to the next level by revisiting and strengthening the foundation of his practice. Today's episode is sponsored by Gusto. Gusto simplifies payroll. One of the firm leaders in my architect CEO program said that Gusto has been a game changer for his business, giving him the big firm tools that allows him to have small business success. Running payroll with Gusto takes approximately seven minutes on average. You can also add benefits in HR and it simplifies the filing of your taxes. As a podcast listener, get three months free when you run your first payroll. Go to gusto.com, that's G-U-S-T-O dot com forward slash B-O-A to get your free three months and support the show. Now on with today's episode. Tell me, Jefferson, tell me about the state of firm and life that made you want to join the FF program. What was the discomfort that you were feeling you want to get, get away from? Um, Addison Skierbeek started probably 25 years ago and has gone through multiple iterations of what it looked like and had been practicing for a long time. And I just came to the realization that there were uh, parts of the business that were limited by the way that we were doing the work. And I think that I felt like that it's a time to grow and a time to try to expand a little bit. Um, I would say that there was a little, there's a little stress in the idea that the repetitive nature of doing the things and wanting to work with others. And I have a partner and we practice sort of, uh, together and individually that by creating a, a more stable kind of understanding what the office was that we would be able to move forward and expand. So I think the pain point was just not having anything feel organized. And this was a, a chance, AFF was a chance for us to try to put a, a stronger foundation and an underpinning under what we were doing and, and make it more real. Okay, you talked about some specific some specific things. Could you get more specific on what exactly it was that uh, you you were feeling that discomfort about that you wanted to change? I mean, you talked about the firm's been around for a while, but you mentioned wanting to grow. You mentioned um, something about the processes. Could you get more specific on exactly what was prompting you to look to this solution? I, I think that every day felt like we were putting out fires and that we weren't. And I think what AFF has pointed out to us is the idea that focusing on the business and trying to spend time establishing um, organ, organized time as it were would help because I think that the daily, the daily grind as it were was um, 
putting out fires, chasing around, and then realizing that every time we did something, we were, it felt like we were starting from scratch, from proposals to responses to those types of things. And so it just felt like organization was what we were critically needing. So we specifically, it was, you know, every step of the process was um, not fully organized. And I think that uh, both, uh, and I, I'll throw a little plug in for Mark, our LePage and his Entre Architects, his sort of gathering of process. And he, you know, I bought his sort of, here's all your processes. And I looked at it and went, well, that doesn't quite tell me what's the backbone to it and how to. And so I felt like AFF was actually offering, uh, digging a little deeper than just trying to overlay somebody else's processes on, on our firm. So that's, I think that's what intri sort of intrigued me about it going here. So. And how were the, uh, the fires that you were having to put out and that, that way of running the business, you know, how was that overall affecting just your quality of life and the areas outside of work and practice? You know, the, the, the grand dilemma is, is I'm pretty good at working when I need to work and I can shut it off. Um, I, I, I think that that's why I, I am a, a, a practitioner with my wife in a, in a sort of solo small practice because we have a pretty decent quality of life. We have flexibility. And so I don't know that I would say that architecture is ever actually, cause I love, I love doing it and I don't, I don't dread it or I, I actually kind of like fires. I think that I'm sort of slightly prone to that and trying to get that out of my life maybe. <laughs> but so I, I don't, I, it's hard for me to say the quality of my outside life is any less because of architecture. And so I, it, it really wasn't that it was really all internal to the office. That was what was driving me. Cool. And how did you find the AFF program? You know, I've been obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but I'm watching for a long time with your, the marketing and I've come to, I think I came to one of the seminars for the architects uh, marketing um, Institute and found it through that. I've obviously watched the business of architecture on the podcast and belonged to the Facebook page. And I think it was probably through that or one of your mailings that you sent out um, email. So what was your number one concern about joining the AFF program? Number one concern, you know, I'm uh, uh, probably more uh, worried about money than I probably should be. And I think my biggest concern is always how much does something cost? And it, it, you mentioned even today on the call, the idea of what's the return on investment in, in the money that you're spending. And I have, a, I have a challenge in my own sort of internal wiring as to how to um, figure out what that return on investment will be and what appropriate is to spend to do the things that uh, really need to be spent. And how did you overcome that particular reluctance and decide to take the leap? Well, for me, it really is a matter of looking at the bank account and saying, can I afford it at this moment? And, and at the time that the offer came, the, the work in the office had been strong enough that it, it felt like the right thing to do. And it also, the, or there, I don't want to say that it was super urgent, but it felt like it was an appropriate time to pay more attention to the building of a business. Talk about your experience going through the program and implementing your vision and just the different things that we've taught in the program and that you have implemented. The, the overarching kind of most important thing, I think was right at the very beginning, you talked about what is your vision. And uh, I, I like the term vision story because it ties together both what you want to do personally and what you want to do professionally. And I think it is probably the biggest hurdle that I have is projecting myself into the future and allowing myself to say, this is what I want then. Um, five years from now is a long ways away. Uh, 10 years from now, I was um, looking at the vision story the last time and looking at I think you, you do a goal setting um, process and you talk about a, a next week, next month, next year, five years. And then you were talking about 20 years and it's like, I'm not even sure at this point in my life that I can think about what 20 years from now looks like. And I probably always had a hard time kind of looking beyond 
next week. And so that challenge was, was a, a, a pretty fantastic uh, process and I really appreciated it. Um, the, the next and most critical thing, because I think they tie together is the idea of having a, a consistent weekly meeting as an office. And though our office is only my partner and I, having that weekly consistent meeting to talk about that vision story, I think is important. Um, getting everybody on the same page. And it's been wonderful actually watching some of the other firms that are slightly bigger than us, maybe a little bit ahead of us in certain uh, sort of office maturity, take that weekly meeting that I think seems critical and watch it flower in a, in a slightly bigger organization makes me very interested in the idea of how do we grow so that we can continue to do that um, sort of conversation. Awesome. What was you, you mentioned that the visioning process, which didn't come naturally to you, uh, you found it to be very powerful. Specifically, can you talk about what was it about going through that, that felt like it gave you some value? I think for me is, is that it laid it out in a fairly clear framework so that you could, um, it, was, it, it didn't leave it all open-ended and vague, like where do you want to be in 10 years? It said, okay, here are the six or eight areas of how you might want your, your life or your office or your business to be different or the same and be specific about it. So it actually gave a framework of specificity that I think was beneficial to me um, in, by breaking that up into, into specific areas. So I, I found that, that very powerful. Uh, and I think on top of it, and this probably is the deep underlay when I talk about my own discomfort with money, the idea that our office never really knew if it was profitable per se, never really knew if it was efficient at what it was doing. Um, the just analysis of where the office stood financially in the vision story, I think is a, is an interesting and, and uh, powerful aspect. And part of how in AFF we've worked toward this idea of what profitability looks like and pulling back to even the simple five accounts with the, the profit first sort of methodology has been very beneficial because it actually does make it clear that we are profitable and we are, able to look at that and say, hey, look, there's the profit number for this year. It's not hidden. Hey, Architect Nation, real fast, I want to draw your attention to May 1st through the 3rd, 2019. I'm hosting the Architect Business Summit in Chicago, Illinois, and I would love to meet you there in person. During these three days, some of the most successful architects I've had the pleasure of working with will pull back the curtain to reveal what they're doing to grow their income, freedom, and impact as firm owners. This will be the must attend event for architecture firm owners in 2019. You won't want to miss this. Go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash live to get information on who will be speaking and find out how to grab your ticket. You talked about the, the specific structure helped you uh, kind of get better at looking and take making that vision in your head. What would you say would be the benefit for you personally of having gone through that process and, and gone through that structure? Personally, I think that at, because I say that I'm not good at sort of projecting myself into the future, it, it, it encouraged me and I, I've used the word, but it's not probably apt, but it forced me to put myself further forward than maybe I have thought of or feel comfortable thinking of. I think that my lack of wanting to go there has a tendency to be sort of a self-limitation of not wanting to be disappointed if I don't get to where I set goals. And um, I think that we all know that, and, and I, I love some of uh, Scott Beebe's sort of comments about, uh, you know, you don't really know where you're going if you haven't set a goal to get there, or there's wonderful quotes that, that uh, lead to that. And I think that setting up those signposts and markers and goals out in the future have been really important for me and something that I've, uh, I've, been, I've been stretched to do, so. Why are those important for you, Jefferson? Uh, I think that it would be that how I guess I'm going to hmm, important because I think that there's a satisfaction, I guess I find in setting goals and achieving them. 
And I think that being stretched to set the goals helps and then also then being coached and encouraged to achieving them has been a, a pretty rewarding process. So but I think it's, it's sort of personal reward and as much as anything. So it sounds like you've been rewarded by the growth that you've experienced from being stretched a little bit. I, I feel, accurate? yeah, I, 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 I it, 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 it's, it's interesting. It's sort of hard to put it into words, but there's a, a, a is it a satisfaction or a, um, it, it definitely has been um, an interesting and challenging process, but I think that there's a kind of a, uh, there's a pleasure about stretching yourself and doing things that it's, it's difficult, I guess, when you have sort of a voice in the back of your mind saying, you know, I don't think that you really, you don't have this quite figured out as to how it's supposed to be done and talking to others that are doing it and understanding how they're doing it. I think there's kind of a, uh, a comfort as it were in moving forward and making things a little more efficient, a little more calm, a little better. And also think, you know, if there's, it's part of the architectural ethos to be critical about what you're doing. And I think that being critical is a way to, that you can improve on things. So I think that that's part of the process. So you talked about why, um, why it's been important to you personally. Why, would, why has it been important for you from a business standpoint? I don't know that that's actually been solved yet. Um, I think that's to be proven. Uh, but I, but I feel like it's given me more f- stable ground to stand on, to find out. And I think it's in the next year that we'll find out if it, if it actually sort of impacts the business. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say that it has yet, but I, I feel like it's right on the, right on the cusp of beginning to happen. Well, speaking of the cusp, you know, what, what results do you, for, how do you foresee this helping you in the future? If you had to just project forward, you know, what's your guess about this trajectory in the way that it will go? Well, it, because I'm, we're starting to set sort of future goals. And I think that one of the goals and, and it's been, I think, uh, uh, informative to be able to talk to other people. I think that some of the people like Hank and, um, that are running slightly larger firms. And it, I, I find that very uh, reassuring that it can be done and I'd like to, I'd like to get there. So our, our goal is to, um, you know, set those goals and take the steps necessary. And I think that AFF is what's working us toward, you know, succeeding in those goals. So. Do you, do you, uh, uh, do you foresee yourself running a larger organization? It, it's a good question because I think that, that as you talk about some of the some of the people that are even earlier in the process and than I, where they talk about the percentages of the money and the, what they can afford and things like that, um, I, I do see myself in a slightly larger organization. I don't know that it will be. I, I have no intention of becoming a Gensler, however he did that, but, but I, I could see, you know, five to eight people and it, it seems like it would be a comfortable and enjoyable um, size. That's sort of in my mind what I'd like to see happen. So. Okay. What, what would you say? We've taught, you've touched on this a little bit, but what would you say is the emotional benefit you've gotten from going through this process? Perhaps you're more confident now saying no to the wrong projects or raising your fees. Perhaps you feel less stress uh, because you now have a framework that will help you grow. What has been that emotional benefit for you personally? I think that it's just uh, stability. Um, I, I like the idea of building processes so that we don't have to rethink things. So my own personal kind of comfort, I guess would be the word that I would use of just knowing that we're working forward and we're not just, uh, and I, the, I guess muddling around. It feels like maybe I've spent the last, you know, five or so years kind of muddling around and practicing architecture, but not really building the business of doing architecture. So. Awesome. Jefferson, do you have any additional feedback either in praise of the program or feedback on how we can make it better? Um, 
I, I think it's a, it's a fantastic program. I've really enjoyed the process. I've, I've enjoyed hearing other people's stories and, and hearing their struggles and, and how they're working through them. I think that you and, and Scott have run a, uh, an amazing kind of organizational uh, methodology that really does support architects. I think it's great. I think it's, uh, um, I don't, if, if there's anything, what, is there anything that you change? Um, I really like the weekly meetings. Um, I don't think that you can, I don't think that they could be changed. Um, it's interesting having a new group of people kind of come in, maybe one kind of little uh, side note would be, let us know when and why, I guess, people are adding. Are, are you, is it just based on marketing cycles? Because it seemed like today's call was huge in comparison to others, but, and no explanation as to every, has, have all those people been on the call before? Maybe I missed a call where they all joined. I missed um, our previous call. So there were, most of those people on the call were staff members of Thorsten and Ann. Oh, okay, okay. And I, I also find it kind of uh, uh, who, who are the Nico, uh, yeah. Margo and Werner. I mean, they've been on the call for like two times and they're already through AFF1. Let's get on to AFF2. It's like, okay, I, that's fast. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they, they came with a lot of stuff already implemented. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. They actually do some, if you take, check out their work, they do some, both Thorsten and his company too, they do some really, really nice residential work, like very, very cool stuff. Yeah. Stuff that even here in the United States would rival, you know, great work yeah. out there. So. Yeah. I, I've always, I've always envied those. I tried it early on in my career to, to teach and practice architecture because mm -hmm. I think it's a really, it's a nice way to go about it, but it's really tough to keep a job as a white man in, in uh, Southern California. In yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you, you can do that for about two years and then you get moved on. And yeah, you got about, you got about two strikes against you from the, yeah. uh, the, the scoring criteria. Yeah. So, it, I mean, but I, I love seeing people that use practice and, and architecture as a, a methodology of kind of putting together a life. I think it's a, it's a, that's great. Right. So I'll look up Thorsten and Ann's stuff. And, cool. Did you have anything else in terms of suggestions for improvement? Um, no, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, in terms of when we add people, so basically, obviously that huge influx was, uh, that's one firm. So those weren't new people. They were just staff members, okay. but we do, a, um, my goal this year is to do another promotion next month and, yeah. um, hopefully, you know, the goal is to get about, uh, I think nine, nine to 10 new members into the program. And okay. then after that, I'd like to just consistently add two to three a month. Okay. So that's sort of the, the roadmap there. Yeah. Um, uh, Jefferson, first of all, thank you for investing in the program. Uh, okay. that support, uh, it means a lot to me and, and Scott as well. I know. So just really thank you. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Um, the other thing is, uh, yeah, just, I, I, I just want to let you know, I'm grateful to know you, you have a very, uh, humble demeanor that I, I respect and I look to emulate because I know you have a lot of experience. You've had a life, a lot of life experiences, but you always come to the table with an open mind wanting to change and just with a very humble attitude. And so I just want to let you know, you know, I see that and I want to model that. I admire that and respect that about you. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks, Jefferson. That's all today. I don't know if you had sure. anything else you wanted to add to that. If not, we well, can come in today. I, I, have, I have put in my AFF1 um, sort of request to move to AFF2. So I don't know what the process is for that. Yeah. So the process is just um, to schedule a call with me. Okay. And obviously I'm going to be in London next week, so I won't be able to do that. Um, okay. But the second thing is, is, you know, how are the finances right now? Are you able to uh, pay for a similar investment amount for the AFF 2.0 that you paid for 1.0. Is it so that that's what it is, is it's about four or five grand to go to each, to each level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to my partner about that. Okay. And you know, you're one of the first people piloting through the program. So take a look at the curriculum. We can talk about working through a package. Like some of the stuff in the higher level stuff was visualized for people with larger firms. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you feel like it doesn't make sense the way we have the curricular structured, what we might consider doing is let's pick from both of those programs and we can put everything into one level 
And okay. uh, you just have AFF 2.0 would be like kind of the full thing for you at your level. Okay. Okay. Um, how, how could I access those things to look at them? Yeah. Let me, um, uh, I'll just, I'll send you screenshots, I guess. Um, okay. uh, just of the curriculum. I'll, okay. just, I'll just send you a note that kind of talks about, uh, what the, the curriculum is for 2.0 and 3.0. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks Jefferson. Sure. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap. Since you've listened this far, I know that you care about running a profitable and impactful practice. So I've prepared two free online educational seminars for firm owners just like you. The first teaches you how to structure your firm, just like we talked about with Jefferson today, to avoid the overwhelming fires that plague so many small firm owners. If you're ready to move into loving architecture again and focusing on what you want to focus on instead of reacting to the interruptions in your business, visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar. That's one word, freedom webinar, to access this free online training. And you'll also receive one AI continuing education credit. The second seminar you can access shows you how to attract your ideal clients to your firm by using a simple but highly effective marketing process designed specifically for small firm owners just like yourself. Go to architectwebinar.com to access this free training and get one continuing education credit. Today's episode is sponsored by Gusto. Gusto makes managing payroll easy. One of the firm leaders in my Architect CEO program said that Gusto has been a game changer for his business, giving him the big business tools that allows him to have small business success. Running payroll with Gusto takes approximately seven minutes on average. You can also add benefits and HR support to take care of your team and keep your business safe. As a podcast listener, get three free months when you run your first payroll. Go to gusto.com forward slash BOA. That's gusto, G-U-S-T-O dot com forward slash BOA to get your three free months and support the show. As always, the views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.